Hello, in this video I'm going to be working through three different integration by substitution questions. Uh, for this it's probably useful if you know how to integrate by substitution and if you don't I'll link my tutorials on that in the description. So I'm just going to timestamp each question so you can just skip through to, if you don't like the look of one question you can skip through to the next. So let's start off with the first question where we want to integrate between the limits of 0 and pi of 3x squared multiplied by sine of x cubed with respect to x. So the first step is I'm going to select part of this to be equal to u for my substitution. And thinking about it, well, if I set x cubed equal to u, when I then differentiate that, I'll get 3x squared, which is going to cancel with that part there. So I think that looks like a good thing to substitute in. So we're going to set u equal to x cubed. And then we're going to get that du by dx is going to be equal to 3x squared. And so now if we rearrange, treat that like a fraction and rearrange it to get dx as the subject, we get dx is equal to du divided by 3x squared. So now let's substitute everything we know back into the original integral. And I'm actually going to change the limits of my integral now, okay, because it's pretty easy to do. So currently, if we look at these limits here, they're when we're integrating with respect to x, but we're going to be integrating with respect to u, which means we have to change those limits. And that's really easy to do because we have this little equation there that says u is equal to x cubed. So I'm just going to substitute in the lower and upper limits into that there and get the new limits. So when x is equal to 0, or my limit is equal to 0, we get that u is equal to 0 cubed, so that's just still 0. And when uh, u is equal to pi, we sub or x is equal to pi, sorry, we get u is equal to pi cubed, which I'm actually just going to write as pi cubed, I'm not going to write it as a number. Let's now substitute everything else in, so we've got 3x squared multiplied by, well, sine of u, because u is equal to x cubed, so sine of u with respect to u divided by 3x squared. And these 3x squared are going to cancel out like this. And now we have an integral in terms of u with respect to u, which is going to be pretty easy to calculate. So we have the integral between 0 and pi cubed of sine of u with respect to u. And if you don't know, when we integrate sine, that goes to negative cos. And so we have that this is equal to, well, negative cos of u between the limits of zero and pi cubed. And so if we were to then substitute in the upper limit and then subtract what happens when we substitute in the lower limit, we're gonna get negative cos of pi, whoops, that should be pi cubed, pi cubed, subtract negative cos of zero. And I don't know what pi cubed is, so I'm gonna use my calculator. So we're gonna get negative cos of pi cubed, subtract, or plus, because we're doing two negatives, cos of 0, which is going to be 1. And if we work that out, we get an answer that's equal to 0 0.0827. Let's leave it to that, three significant figures. Let's look at the next example, where we're going to be integrating between 0 and 3 of 4x divided by x squared plus 3 to the power of a half with respect to x. So a good rule is when we're integrating um, with substitution, we can let our u equal to whatever is in our brackets, because more often than not, that's going to be the best option. So I'm going to set u equal to that x squared plus 3. So we've got u is equal to x squared plus 3, which means that du by dx is going to be equal to 2x. And rearranging to make dx the subject, we get that dx is equal to du divided by 2x. So from here, I'm going to substitute everything in. And I'm also going to change my limits. So we now have the integral. And I'm going to do it the same way. So I'm going to substitute in my lower limit and upper limit into my equation for u there. So when uh, x is 0, we get u is equal to 0 squared, which is 0, plus 3, which is 3. And when x is equal to 3, we have u is equal to, well, 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12, like this. And now we're going to substitute the rest in. So we have 4x divided by, well, x squared plus 3 is u, so u to the power of a half with respect to u divided by 2x. And these x's here are going to cancel. And then we've got, well, if we highlight it, we've got this 4 divided by 2, which gives me a number that's 2, which is a constant. So I'm going to pull that out to the front of my integral and rewrite it. So we've got two lots of the integral between 3 and 12 of 1 over u squared, or u uh, to the power of a half, which I could write as u to the power of negative a half with respect to u. So from here, we're just going to add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. And we get 2 multiplied by, well, if we add 1 to the power, we get positive a half. And if we divide by a half, we get 2. So we've got 2u to the power of a half between the limits of 3 and 12. 
Same thing again, I'm going to substitute in my upper limit and then subtract what happens when I substitute in the lower limit. So we're going to get 2 multiplied by 12 to the power of a half or square root 12 and then subtract 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 1 half. I'm going to use my calculator again because I have a feeling these numbers might not be that nice. So let's work this out. Subtract 2 multiplied by 3 to the power of 1 half. And that gives us an answer of, I'll do it to say two decimal places, 6.23 as the answer to our integral. Okay, let's look at this final example where we want to integrate between 0 and pi by 2 of sine x divided by cos x plus 2 all cubed with respect to x, okay? And so for this, I'm going to be thinking, well, I want to set u equal to this cos x plus 2 because when I differentiate cos, it's going to go to negative sine and that's obviously going to cancel out with the numerator, okay? But we'll see that in a second. So we've got that u is equal to cos x plus 2. So therefore, if we differentiate this, we get du by dx, which is going to be equal to negative sine of x. And rearranging to get dx, we have that dx is equal to du divided by negative sine of x. Okay. Let's now substitute everything we know back into the integral and change our limits. Okay. So now we've got the integral. Well, of the lower limit is zero. So if I substitute that in for here, we've got u is equal to cos of zero plus two. And I could even write that over here. So u is equal to cos of zero plus two. And when x is equal to zero in that, cos of zero is just one. One plus two gives us an answer of three. So our lower limit is now three. And our upper limit is when we have u is equal to, well, cos of pi by two plus two. Okay, and so when uh, we have cos of pi by 2, that's equal to 0. So 0 plus 2 is just going to give us an answer of 2. And that's of sine x divided by u cubed with respect to u divided by negative sine of x. Okay, now there's a couple of things that are going to happen here. So firstly, these sine x's are going to cancel out. But you'll notice, okay, on our integral, our upper limit is a smaller number than our lower limit, okay? And we can actually change that quite easily. All we have to do is put a negative in front of the integral, and that allows us to flip our limits. So if we do that, we have negative the integral between two and three of one over u cubed with respect to u divided by negative one. And we can actually neaten this up a little bit. We could factorize out this negative one as it's a constant, and that's gonna turn the integral positive again. So now we've got the integral between two and three of, well, one over u cubed is the same as u to the power of negative three with respect to u. And this is pretty easy to integrate. We're gonna add one to the power, okay? And that's gonna give us u to the power of negative two, divided by the new power, which is negative two, so divided by negative two, between the limits of two and three. And if we work that out, we substitute in the upper limit first, and we're gonna get three to the power of negative two divided by negative two, subtract what happens when we substitute in the lower limit. So subtract two to the power of negative two divided by negative two like that. And it might look a bit better if we put these in brackets. And if we work that out, I'm gonna use a calculator and we get that we get an answer of five over 72. So not a bad answer either. So hopefully this video was useful. If it was, like, subscribe and share and go over to my channel for tons more maths tutorials. Thanks for watching.